Okay, so I was trying to make uh, some of those brain road videos you usually see on TikTok, or you could call them satisfying videos. Uh, but I think the common name is uh, brain road. Uh, so this is just a simple simulation that I, I, I'm trying to uh, do some sh social media, maybe TikTok, uh, maybe uh, YouTube uh, shorts, uh, this type of content. But uh, it's really, really hard to do in Blender, especially because uh, you want to you want it to be procedural. Uh, because you can see, I'm starting out with uh, a simple. A shutter just two slices and then double that and then double double that this is really hard to do with using blender especially if you want to make it go on uh, uh, increasing and uh, here is another example so uh, for this it's just uh, a simple uh, domino effect Let's start with a few dominoes so it's uh, uh, uh what is it called this wrecking ball versus dominoes uh, that's what that's the concept i was going for uh, so we start with uh one column i wanted to start with one column and then two and then go on to more but uh yeah it was going to be too much too too, too long so uh, and uh your attention uh, on brain road content is really not there so uh, i simplified it to make it simple and here we have a larger stack uh, so setting this up in a procedural way in blender is basically not really doable uh unless uh, i remember there was a time when they were working on the um arabic deep geometry nodes section where you you could have physics simulation in geometry nodes but i don't know what wh where that ended uh, but uh, if that was possible maybe this would po be possible but uh yeah so i decided to just go with houdini and create up uh create a simple setup uh that was procedural so let me show you how simple this was. Uh, first, I set up, I created the a procedure domino. It, it's not necessary, but uh, you can just uh, make it in Blender and import it in Houdini. Let me first turn off, uh, hide other objects. So you can see how I start with a cube here and uh, basically, let's see, convert. Uh, this to align one of the edges to to align because i want the lengths to be the same and uh, let me see i center it with using the match size uh, subdivide it to add extra points so that these are three points we start with two and then go to three uh, basically it's stuff you would you would know how to do in in geometry nodes except here you're just using a uh, different nodes and uh, instance these three cylinders um, move or uh, scale them down and uh, I think do I move them I don't remember but uh, yeah what do I do here oh, I, I create this side thing extru extrude it and uh, join it to the rest of uh, you can see the tubes there and uh, this mirrored here so I end up with this and uh, these top ones are just also uh, I this mesh subdivided I th let me see yeah I subdivide it a few times and instance uh, these cylinders on top of it and then merge it into uh, you, you don't have to do this in Houdini it's, it's faster and easier to do in uh, because I'm using the same uh, the same Lego piece over and over it's not really necessary but i just wanted to do everything in houdini and uh, now this part is really easy to set up because you can do the same thing in geometry nodes except you won't be able to uh, run uh, the physics simulation so here i have uh, the lego piece uh, let me first turn off this uh, you can see the lego piece there and uh, this is the simulation so uh, the simulation is very very simple you start off with a line and uh, actually this is just me creating the wrecking ball so yeah you can still do this in blender no point in doing it in houdini because it doesn't really uh, do much except i wanted it to to be able to swing let me run our an rbd simulation here a uh, bullet solver here just to show you how this works so i can connect uh, this uh, if i play back we have uh this swinging and uh, I set up uh, a, a few constraints uh, to connect the wrecking ball to a sphere and uh, with a hinge constraint uh, that I created here. Uh, that's very simple setups. 
uh, I'm working on an, up, on an update to my uh, blend, uh, Houdini for Blender Artists course, and uh, I'll be showing you how to set up constraints and other things. But uh, yeah, it's a simple setup to make this wrecking ball swing. This is where I can select where how far the rotation is. And if I want this to be longer, the line lo to be longer, I can easily just uh, scale, maybe make it 15, make this longer, and uh, then I can run. So this is quite procedural. And uh, what I love about Houdini is that all the other systems can work together. So yeah, the RBD system can can be part of the uh, the procedural geometry nodes you create. Uh, so here I to create the stack of Legos, I start with a line and uh, transform it. Oh, I think it was rotated wrongly. So um, yeah, basically I start with a grid with a different with a few points. Uh, then uh, yeah, so this is to reduce the the count of uh, stacks I have. So you can see here we have the full stack. But if I come to the fuse, which is basically in Blender the merge by distance node, if I increase this, you can see how many we get lesser and lesser stacks because each of these is instanced on a point from this grid. I'm basically using the equivalent to the merge by distance node uh, to merge closer points together, uh, which will reduce the count. And uh, so we have that. I resample these curves to have more more points, which then I instance uh, these. Basically, the things you, you, you might already know how to use in Blender. Uh, it's, Houdini is not that different from Blender, but it's just a little bit more powerful. Okay, so you have a stack. And again, it's procedural. If I change the fusing here, you can see I can have many, I can have less. And in fact, if I start with three here, uh, here I'm just adding a few, I'm setting up RBDs and other groups uh, that I could use in the future uh, in materials and what. And uh, here I'm setting up some constraints because you can see that uh, some of these stay stuck together. They're not all collapsing uh, because Lego blocks are interlock. Uh, so yeah, you want to have that interlocking in as well. So that is a result of uh, these constraints that I set up uh, to link everything together. Uh, so here we have the RBD. Uh, here I'm just setting up some constraints. I don't really remember what I'm changing here. Uh, yeah, I'm setting up the type of constraints uh, to use. And... Uh, I can even run another RBD simulation here just to show you uh, this. So I can, I think I have sleeping turned on so some of they won't fall without uh, being hit. Uh, so let me just first turn on uh, the ground for this and uh, disable some of these constraints uh, I don't want any constraints. I don't want any. Let me also turn off this RBD config, which is, I think, turning, deactivating these uh, so that they don't fall immediately. So if I play back, you can see how uh, this is playing. You can see uh, they fall. And uh, if I want more, all I have to do is just come back to the fuse and make more. And uh, they will fall again as well so that this is what blender lacks uh, that procedure nature that connects with all the other systems uh, but uh, if we can get that it's just going to be a different game but uh, yeah so uh, then let, let me bring all these back and I just we let this go to the main simulation uh, with uh, the breaking ball as well. So we have uh, this, so let's play back. Let me first produce the number of points we have. Yeah, it's, it's a bit slow, but uh, this, this swings and uh, collides into, into these. And uh, that's how I did 
that I that's how I did uh, this simulation is is uh, I'm trying to grow my social media presence uh, outside uh, YouTube because I think uh, why not uh, and uh, yeah, I'm going to be using a combination of Blender and Houdini. And uh, this time, this is all rendered in Houdini. And let me show you uh, the difference between Houdini's how you render in Houdini versus in Blender. So I'm um, just going to go out of this object context to the stage where the re all the rendering is happening. And uh, uh, this would be the equivalent of opening up a, a new. Uh, I think would it be a new view layer? Let's see, new view layer. If you go to layout, does that give us a completely? No, it's not. So it would be like creating a new scene in Blender, new without anything, and then you just import in all the other uh, stuff you have just created. So you can see we still have access to the collections we we had. So I can import them in here into the new scene. I uh, import the lights import the rigid body uh, basically that's what we you do at the stage level uh, so you import in you start with an empty stage so and uh, then you use these nodes to import in so uh, if i don't have this you can see i basically yeah i have this background so you start off with an empty scene like this and you can import in the stuff you created in the different in the object context so i import in the lego bricks and uh, these were already simulated and you, uh, i can import in uh, the background like that i match them into a single node like that and uh, uh, here i'm just importing the camera uh, you still have to use nodes when you are setting up things for rendering in houdini and uh, here I'm setting up uh, lights. Uh, so the lights are usually set up within the stage. So you can see, so I have a dome light, which is basically how you set up an HDRI light. And you can see that uh, we have uh, that in the background. You can switch it as you, if you want. I can disable it by selecting Q. Uh, then I can add another light. Uh, you can see the light there. Uh, then a neck, another one here, a top light, then and then setting up material can be a little bit confusing at first, but uh, you basically have uh, this container where you create all the materials you want and uh, you use the material library and uh, you go in and create the materials. Uh, the, the nodes looks, look a bit similar to, uh, to Blender's nodes. So this is uh, another, you can call it a group node. Uh, they call it a subnetwork here. Uh, so I have one for the metal, which is the wrecking ball, and then the wood, it would be the background, and then the Lego bricks. Uh, let's go to the Lego bricks a bit here. So you enter the group, and you can see uh, this would be the standard PBR material in Blender, and uh, you can see the base, uh, roughness, and everything. Uh, basically set it up in that same way, and uh, I randomize each of these to have a different color, and... Uh, for this, because I'm using Material X, I would have to go into Kama XP, uh, which is Houdini's render engine, uh, to see the results. Uh, so you can see that uh, now each of these has uh, has its own different color. So let's go back to the Material and uh, Lego. You can even preview these materials similar to how you would in Blender. So for example, if I had, let me go back to the old scene here. So, for example, if I had this, let's see, if I had a texture, a brick texture, uh, in Blender, if you have the Node Wrangler add on anybody, you use Control Shift click. Uh, let's go to the Material tab, and you can preview that node. Uh, if I have another, let's say, uh, let's say a color node. Uh, is it the RBD? RB, RGB node, you can use Ctrl Shift click on it and you preview that node. Uh, similarly, Houdini has that. So for example, let's say we have, uh, let's import in an image. You can use image, uh, which you just use the uh, Material X image node. Uh, I can just grab this and uh, you can select the file. Let me grab, let me grab whatever I have here. Uh, so to, to preview this, 
uh, you just use X and it will create a visualized node, but you can see it's not previewing yet. Uh, for some reason when in Houdini, this has to be calculated by passing it through uh, the node. And uh, for some reason it's not, let's see. Ah, yeah, it's, it's not showing because in Houdini, to preview the objects, the material that contains that data has to be active. And right now we are still at the area light. So anything below it is not being preview, pre previewed. So our material library hasn't been calculated. So I have to go onto that. And uh, you can see under it, there is an assignment material and an assignment node. So here you can see all the materials we have, but we haven't assigned them. To assign them, we use the assign material node. So I have to look at that and uh, let's see. Yeah, you can see that we should be uh, previewing the materials uh, now. So you can see that the image texture, if I go back to the library, uh, should be we should be previewing this because if I remove this, we go back, we should be going back to the original, original texture. Oh, I still have this connected. So uh, let me delete that. We should be able to go back to the original colors. Yeah, so you can see that we have our colors, uh, but uh, I think I was using uh, this random color generator to preview this, I think. No, it's this, I think. Perfect. So you can see the different colors. So it's, uh, it's not that different in Blender, and I can promise you, if you if you somewhat good with Blender, you can easily pick up Houdini and uh, yeah, take advantage of all the other things. And uh, it doesn't mean you have to abandon Blender because I haven't done that either. I'm still using it quite a lot. Uh, it's basically just an extra tool that you can leverage in your workflow. Uh, it's really, really powerful and I would recommend anyone to do it. Anyway, if you want to get started with Houdini, links are in the description for my Houdini course, out is the Houdini for Blender Artist course. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.